Hey guys, it's Chilier. Welcome back to STD Gems. Today we're going to be looking at uh, what is called the container adapters. So if we look at the container libraries, obviously we're going to see some familiar faces. Vector, uh, our associative containers. I taught these guys in Intermediate C++. And down here we have something, a little small little section called the container adapters. And what they basically are, are they are uh, wrappers that wrap around these containers up here, sequence containers. And it says they provide a different interface, which is true, although for these guys, it's mostly just a restricted interface. So if we look at, uh, let's say, stack, it provides an interface where you can push, pop, and look at the top of the stack, mainly. There's a few other ones here that are self-explanatory. But it's a very restricted uh, interface because, I mean, with vector, you already have push back, pop back, and you have, you know, back. So this isn't really getting you anything new, but um, well, let's let's see, let's try it out. So we need the header stack. So we'll include stack, and then let's make a std stack, and we'll make a stack of ints. And so we can do you know s dot push sixty nine, and s dot push four twenty, and can print the top of the stack, we can uh, pop one off the stack, and then we can print the top again. And you get pretty much what you should expect from that. No surprises whatsoever. Now, the interesting thing about the container adapter is it can work with different kinds of containers. So the stack defaults to working with a deck. Um, I haven't, I've, I'll do a video on decks at some point, but it it's kind of like a uh, vector, but you can push to the front and the back, and you can pop from the front and the back. I don't know why it defaults to a deck and not a vector. Vector seems like the uh, the baseline, but whatever. We can make ours use a vector. We just go into here and we go std vector int. And we see it does exactly the same thing, right? So you could use a stack in your program and that would give you a little bit of flexibility from changing the underlying uh, container. But if we're being super honest with ourselves here, uh, when I'm when I need a stack, I'm probably just gonna use a vector. I'm not gonna bother with the std stack. I don't really care. I mean, it, I guess it's nice to have a simpler interface, but I mean, everyone's familiar with vector anyways. It's not like there's gonna be any sort of cognitive overload. Uh, and I mean, when are you ever gonna want to use a std list? Linked structures, we we know the problems with them uh, in, in terms of how the cache prefetcher works and all that stuff. Std list, you you know, you're not gonna be reaching for it that often. And uh, and so if if I'm only if I'm only ever really going to want a vector, yeah, I don't see the the big value of stack, but it's in there. Another little interesting thing I just want to point out, you see this in some of the standard library types. It has you can access the underlying container, but it is protected, which means you can only access it if you inherit from stack, which implies that the makers of the standard library intend for you to be able to inherit from uh, their types, at least in certain situations. And because I see some faulty information online about you should never inherit from the standard library types. That's not true. You you use the correct tool for the job. It doesn't mean you should do it very often, um, but it is a valid design choice in, you know, some situations. So that's a stack. And the queue is, you know, it's similar, except it's, it's a queue, right? So you can add items to the end of the queue, but you remove from the front of the queue. So it's, uh, it's a first in, first out. And you know, for this reason, it's going to be more restricted as to what uh, containers you can use. Obviously, you can't use a vector because you can't remove from the front of a vector. You can only remove from the end of the vector. So you have to choose either a deck and a list. And among these two, deck is the, is the clear winner. Again, I'll, I'll talk about deck in its own video. But I mean, similar to stack, I might just use a deck by itself. It's got push back, pop back, push front, pop front. So you might be asking yourself, well, Chili, if you're not using these things, why are you showing them to us? Well, save the best for last priority queue. So if you've watched my video on heaps, and if you haven't, I recommend that you do. Um, priority queue is a wrapper around a sequence container, and it needs to have, be able to support random access, which means you're, you're down to vector or deck. And what it does is it manages this container as a priority queue basically using the uh, the heap operations from algorithm. So like I've shown you in the uh, the video on heap operations, 
You can manage the container yourself uh, using push heap and pop heap and make heap, but it's it's a little it's a little annoying. This just wraps that up in a very nice clean interface. You push, you add something. The top is always going to be the lowest value. No, it's going to be the, the highest value. So it's a, it defaults to being a max heap. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, top gets you the largest value. You can push elements in the container in any order you want. Uh, top will always be the largest one since it defaults to a max heap and pop will remove the largest one. So let's try that out. We uh, include Q and let's make a little data type. We're going to give you an example of something that you might you might be able to see in a game. So let's say we've got some kind of game. It's working on a uh, tick. It's kind of like turn-based, but it's based on ticks. And actions have a delay or a charge-up time associated with them, let's say. So when an action is uh, initiated, it is put in a schedule queue. And uh, when, that, when the time reaches that action's uh, future scheduled timestamp, then the action will resolve. Now, you can't just use a normal first-in, first-out queue because the actions, they have different delays associated with them, so they won't happen in the order that they were inserted in the queue. So you need a priority queue. So we go std priority queue, and uh, let's see here. Type is going to be action. Container is going to be std vector of action. And uh, the comparator is going to be std greater action. Because, I mean, obviously we want, we want to resolve them from, you know, lower timestamp to higher timestamp. So we want a min, we want a min priority. So we want a min heap. And then let's push some actions onto there. So we'll go uh, push. So the first one we push in there resolves at timestamp 20. And uh, what is it going to be? We'll make that one the, uh, the Alabama. And then let's play out how that would uh, resolve in the game simulation. So while Q dot uh, empty, not, we are going to print out, mm, so at time, let's make ourselves a convenient reference here, const auto a for action is equal to q dot pop, so at time a dot timestamp, the action a dot description resolves. So. It should now, oh wait, well, last thing we should do is probably go q.pop, remove it once it's resolved, and there you go. Let's run this, so they're being inserted in basically random order, and they should come out in their proper chronological order. And there you have it. So, that is the basic idea of the priority queue. Simple example here to give you an idea of how that might be actually practical and useful, and I mean, this ain't the only thing uh, I've said it in the heap video, but, uh, for example, the A star algorithm also relies heavily on a priority queue. And I've implemented A star with a priority queue, custom data type vector, and it worked great. But that's gonna about do it for today. Hope you liked this video, hope you learned something. If you did, please click the like button, helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more STD gems.